Hi, and welcome to Filmmaker's Compass Podcast, the show where we talk about movies and well more movies. I'm D-Man, and this week, joined again by CP. CP, how you doing? I'm good. I'm back. Although, I Hell don't yeah. think anybody actually missed me, but I'm back. I did. Glad to have you back, man. I'm excited for our episode this week because we have a kind of a theme to this episode, which we'll get to in a minute. But before we do, I'll throw it over to you first. Did you have any shout outs on this episode? Because I um, No, go for it. All right. Well, I mentioned him last week and I'm very, very excited. CP, I had to do uh, some of his comments because he's been shooting them our way for the last two weeks. And that is a massive, massive shout out to uh, none other than E. Dreezy, Eric Drucker. Thank you, man, for tuning into the show. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. He left us a few comments. So if you'll go ahead and indulge me, audience, here's what Drucker's had to say about the podcast. So first up, he said, of course, I've been enjoying the podcast lately, been doing lots of driving, so wanted to give it a listen. And we appreciate you uh, throwing us on and giving it a try. Thanks, Drucker, I know you and I out. have a little, we have a little podcast history, so I hopefully you still enjoy hearing me talk. But more than that, <laughs> uh, I miss you, man. I know he's hit me up a couple times. He's been back to uh, Southern California, and uh, I think he did a trip to Disneyland and maybe one out to a bar. And recently, I have been unable to meet up with him, although I have in the past. So, Drucker, uh, hopefully next time you are out here, we can actually meet up, maybe get Helson, get a couple people together. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be fun. So, sorry I missed you, though, man, but glad you're you're still making trips out here. and Hopefully see you soon. Mm -hmm. so awesome. he also chimed in he said i didn't read the article about the 10 science fiction movies that didn't age well but i'm shocked they didn't rip on the last starfighter the author has no whimsy and hates fun so i feel like that's a movie they would have hated as well cp oh my god dude i love the last starfighter <laughs> and yes the effects are cringeworthy now but oh it is still so it captures like the spirit of the 80s so well drucker you're right on that's totally one that they would have shat all over in that article all right, CP, here's this is this is great. This is two days ago. Drucker uh, tweeted at us. And if you want to follow Drucker or get involved in the conversation, his uh, handle is at Eric Drucker one on Twitter. So that's where we're uh, conversing. But this is him going all the way back. Drucker, you're you're going through the archives, baby. He said your Halloween lists were great as someone who didn't see Halloween Town until as an adult. I love it. <laughs> I feel like I lost something growing up by not seeing it when I was younger. So. That's amazing. And All you right. are correct, Drucker. Halloween Town, you know, despite its Disney Channel feel, uh, which I actually think is part of its charm, uh, it's still really good. It's great to throw on at Halloween. So, yeah. Uh, he said, uh, also, the uh, Star Wars conversation we had on the last episode with us was on point. Give me all the canon slash legend stories. Love Luke, but it's enough of that saga, especially since there's so many other amazing stories they can tell that are already written. So give me all the Dave Filoni content and that and let's go. So Drucker, you know, we, we, we dove into it on the show last week, but I totally agree with that sentiment. I think Filoni has the pulse of Star Wars. So what he's working on for Disney Plus looks great. I'm excited for Mandalorian season three. They're doing some good things there. But... They still got to make movies. So I totally agree. Uh, draw from some of the uh, established canon and uh, find the things that worked really well and, and put them into motion. So hopefully we'll get some more Star Wars on the big screen because, you know, that's what I want. Uh, and guess who else has got shout outs this week, CP? More Eric Drucker. <laughs> <laughs> God. So... He actually chimed in and said, uh, actually, I just saw the new Puss in Boots. Have you seen it? The villain might be the scariest animated villain I've seen, probably since Scar from The Lion King. Maybe a scariest animated villains list would be fun. So Ooh. we took took note of that, Drucker. Thank you very much for the recommendation. And, and CP, have you Drucker, seen the new Puss in Boots? I did see the new Puss in Boots, and I loved it. What about the villain? Oh, awesome villain. Okay, good. So, all right, well. Drucker, fantastic. Thank you so much for the comments. And uh, CP and I had fun reading through those. So we we saved them because we want to discuss them a little bit on the air. But I love the villains list. We'll probably add that and come up with something for the future. So uh, CP, we also need to give a shout out to the AFC and NFC championship winners in the NFL. Yes, <laughs> we Chiefs, do. The Chiefs and the Eagles. Uh, Andy Reid's two... Uh, most well-known franchises so <laughs> correct very correct um obviously we're gonna throw up a poll we want to know who you guys are rooting for 
because it is a few days till the biggest day of the year, the Super Bowl. And we want to know who you're rooting for. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert, I'm going to take the Chiefs. D-Man, I assume you're not because, well. Yeah, I'm taking the Eagles. And my reasoning for that, honestly, uh, I would love to see Jalen Hurts win the Super Bowl. That guy's just been kind of, I know he's always like risen to a certain height. He He's won the Heisman, I think, or at least he was a contender for the Heisman when he played at Oklahoma. And he's done really, really well in the pros each year. He's gotten better and better, but I'd love to see him with that crown jewel freaking Super Bowl title. I mean, Andy Reid and Mahomes already have him. So Travis Kelsey's already got one. And, you know, I think the Kelsey brothers are playing against each other, Eagles mm-hmm. and Chiefs. So I'm looking forward to that. But it's just, I don't know, it's a, it's a great matchup. But you know what's weird? Speaking of villains, uh, I do not hate either of these teams. Yeah, all like, the teams that I would despise got knocked out. So um. I know it's like great because they're gone. But then it's also like I don't really have anyone to root against. I mean, dude, h- half of my life I've spent rooting against Tom Brady, and now he's not going to be in a Super Bowl. It's very weird. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, Tom Brady did not get his storybook ending. No. Unless tired. being a single man on the market was the storybook he wanted. But I don't think that was it. I don't think he got the storybook ending he wanted. But, CP, today we are going to talk about some actual uh, storybook endings. We're going to talk about sports movies. Yes, and we got to give a shout out to Lindsay Baker, who has been harassing us for weeks to do an episode where we broke down sports movies. And so we figured, you know what? Super Bowl Sunday, uh, in honor of that day, let's make this be the episode where we dive into sports movies. And just to our audience, I mean, Demon and I, as we were talking about this, this is actually really, really hard because there's a lot of fantastic sports movies. There's more than I thought, particularly. Yeah, and as, like, as you start looking at it, you're like, wow, there's way more than I realize. So one of the things we're going to do uh, throughout this episode is kind of, uh, you know, try and pigeonhole some of these movies into categories so we can actually talk about it. Because I know you're probably thinking in the car right now, oh, well, like, uh, you know, there's like, well, this, this. But as you really start diving into this, there are so many sports movies that we got to set some parameters to truly have this conversation. I also want to give a quick, uh, you know, tip of the cap to you and me, because uh, we both wore jerseys for this episode. So a little pat on the back. Look at the production (laughs) value of this show, just upping it again. I don't know if the 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 listeners or the viewers can see, but if you are watching and not listening, I'm actually wearing a Star Wars jersey. And CP, I feel like this was such a missed opportunity, but they put my number is 77, but I feel like it should absolutely be 66. Oh, totally. I was like, gonna say you should actually <laughs> tweet that out to Disney and be like, what gives guys? Seriously. Order 66. Yeah, for real. But this jersey's dope. So it's actually like a stormtrooper color palette, and it looks awesome. The only That's thing is sweet. It's a real anxiety booster when you're eating wings because it's white jersey. It's, yeah, it's white, and I mean, if you get anything on here, it's you see it. Bust out the Scotch Guard, man. Yeah. So, um, but it's pretty dope. It looks good. I imagine this is how it feels to be a Raiders fan. <laughs> I am not wearing a Star Wars jersey. I am wearing a Reggie Wayne Indianapolis Colts jersey because he's like one of my favorite players ever. So there you go. For those of you listening awesome. now, now you know what we're doing on this episode. Well, I'm All ready right. to talk sports movies. Thank you for the list suggestion. And I'm excited because I don't think we've ever really dove into sports on this podcast yet. No. So, so D-Man, where do you want to start? <laughs> well, we like kind you said, of- we went over these topics. I mean, there really are enough movies almost across actual sports where you could do like top football top basketball top baseball right but we're not we're not going to dive into the individual sports here i think the way we were looking at it was like we're going to look at team sports uh solo sports dramas comedy and then kids so at least that's where we'll start at so because we figured you know we could go down each and maybe we'll, we'll get to that we'll do those lists eventually taking a look at each sport but I think we were more interested in the overall category of sports and not any one particular sport, even though, you know, inspiration 
is derived from the Super Bowl. But let's start with uh, team sports here. I kind of I want to see what you have on your list. <laughs> okay. Now, ironically, this team sports list is probably if I had to say the best of the best, half of these are probably on my ultimate final five sports movies. No limitations are on this list. So uh, honorable mentions for me. I'm going to start with American Underdog from 2022, which is the movie about Kurt Warner. And then I'm going to say Moneyball from 2015. Those are my honorable mentions. Both great. Could watch them all the time. But the top three team sports movies for me. Number three. Pride of the Yankees from 1942. Wow, you went all the way back in the... old school, right? This is the this is the story of Lou Gehrig, and okay. it was made at a time where Lou Gehrig was still alive, and and all the great Yankees players from Murderers Row were still alive, and some of them were in the movie, and um, probably one of the best sports movie that there is I, I, that I can think of. Great pick, number two for me. And, and this is really tough because, again, I think on the list of best sports movies ever, this second movie I would probably list as number two all time as well. And that's Miracle from 2004. I mean, great pick, great movie, great story. It blows my mind that it's true because, like, it, like could you make a better movie than that? And then oh, number one. Epic. I mean, it's epic that that happened. Like, yeah, right. Oh, I've yeah. actually gone on YouTube and they actually do show – some of the the clips from the actual match against Russia. And they did like a phenomenal job. Oh yeah. No, the quite the crazy. Incredible. Um, and even and the casting, because don't they have at the end, they show like where the people are now and yeah. what they looked like when they were yep. on the team. I was like, yep. wow, you guys knocked it out of the park. Oh, it's so, it's so well done. And I mean, I, I love hockey, so of course I was going to love Miracle. And number one for me, Remember the Titans, 2000. Um, movie has everything. Drama, comedy, uh, the football sequences are great. And it showed us, there's actually a great uh, Instagram clip where it says that the only thing more powerful than racism in America is football. And this movie is proof of that. <laughs> well done. All right. Hey, I mean, Remember the Titans is probably one of the all-time great sports movies so it's actually i knew you were going to pick that so i left that off sorry my list (laughs) yeah so we're doing team sports and i have to give a a massive honorable mention to uh the toon squad so if we're talking team sports here i I at least got to throw out their name because uh michael jordan and the looney tunes just absolutely crushed it in the original. And we actually did a movie remake time a while back. So if you want to get our thoughts on Space Jam and then the new Space Jam starring LeBron James, we have already gone deep into that discussion on this show before. But I mean, come on. I can't say Team Sports without mentioning Toon Squad. I should probably have a Toon Squad jersey. Those are awesome. The OG ones. Yep. Those are sick. Like if somebody, if I ever got that as a gift, I'd be like, holy shoot. Putting it on right now. Steph, are you but, listening to this episode? I hope so. <laughs> uh, number three on my list. I am actually going to go with A League of Their Own. Ooh, so, okay. Love that movie. And so this is actually somewhat of a comedy, but also a little bit of a drama. There's a sibling rivalry. But I love the story of, you know, picking up with these players in kind of a farm system as, you know, the men are off at war and the women are, you know, our sports entertainment right back mm-hmm. in the States. So it was a fantastic story. I think Tom Hanks as the manager knocks it out of the park. I think they oh, did a good great. job really of writing all the characters. They're all mm-hmm. memorable in their own way as, as characters should be in sports movies. Mm-hmm. And because the movie takes place back in, I think it's like late thirties, early forties. Um, it aged really well. Mm-hmm. Like it looks great yeah. still. I, yeah. I, you know, when it comes on TV, I leave it on and, and it's one of those great movies. So Number two for me uh, is actually kind of a little, like a little weird because they didn't actually play in a league, but I'm going to go with the Sandlot. (laughs) So, you know, they sort of just played against each other in an open lot. It wasn't that they played in a league, but uh, as far as the, the team that's assembled, they're legendary. 
And again, they wrote all the characters really well. Enjoy that movie every year on 4th of July. It's actually one of three movies. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Three or four movies that I watch every 4th of July, which Independence Day, Jaws, and The Sandlot. (laughs) Just amazing. What a lineup. That is just a great lineup. Like sometimes during the day, because, you know, fireworks at night and all that stuff. Like if I am just chilling during the day, because I normally have somewhere to go at night, I just throw those movies on and they're fantastic. (laughs) But Sandlot, also a big part of my childhood. But number one, like, honestly, it's like miracle on acid. No, it's not. It's the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, the Mighty Ducks is honestly, that is my all time favorite. That doesn't necessarily make it the best sports movie, but Mighty Ducks is my all time favorite sports movie. It inspired me to get roller rollerblades and, and play cul-de-sac hockey. And it literally inspired a sports franchise in Anaheim. It is fantastic it holds up amazing they're even creating a new show on disney plus called game changers around the mighty ducks Mm -hmm. just amazing i love this movie it's so funny and it's so endearing because the group of kids are just complete underdogs and nobody believes in them they don't even believe in themselves honestly they they literally like the first game emilio estevez is there they're like yeah we suck yeah right like they don't even believe in themselves and so you know, it's a movie about turning around that perception of yourself and they go on, spoiler alert, to become champions. What? So, what? We <laughs> are the champions. <laughs> Side note, I don't know if you ever knew this. Uh, they play We Will Rock You at the end of The Mighty Ducks, but I didn't know this. Do you know there's a second version where they don't play that at the end? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so like the made for TV version or something. Yeah, they like lost the rights. Like they only had the rights to like the theatrical or something. So they had to like redo it. No way. I didn't realize that. I've only yeah. seen it. Last time I watched it was on the DVD, which I assume is the same as the theatrical. So because you know how it has like that super dramatic music and then Emilio yeah. Estevez is on the bus and then he stops the bus and he gets out and he's like, and get ready for next year. You know, we got to defend our title. And it's like, doom, doom, tsh, doom, doom, tsh, and it like kicks in. Mm-hmm. yeah there's a different version that doesn't have that i had no idea yeah wild so all right well that does it for my team movies those are you know like i said those are my favorites uh, again i didn't put remember the titans on there maybe not the best but those are my favorites all time okay um so let's take a look at like solo movies solo like solo sports films about you okay. know, individual athletes all right. Well, I'll pick up. I mean, I know I just went, but I think I have my my list is pretty quick, I think, because we've talked about at least one of these movies. Uh, number three, I have Karate Kid. So we actually did a total rewind on Karate Kid, which is great. Yep. And I know the movie actually is not necessarily most of it is like a sports movie so much as it is the relationship between uh, the main character and mr miyagi but he does compete at the end and wins the title and i've always loved that movie i think you know that movie is just you know it's a great movie about standing up to bullies and you know discipline and and different things that i think you know we all strive for but you know it teaches you you got to put in that work you know wax on wax off yeah 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 so and he's rewarded for it so it's great uh number two and this is actually uh I think this is just a great movie. Now, this is kind of like a biopic, like fictional biopic, but it's called The Wrestler, starring uh, Mickey Rourke. That is a great movie. Darren Aronofsky. Yeah. Yeah. CP, you know me. I was super big into like the WWE Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and some of those guys, you know, when we were growing up. And The Wrestler always hit home because, you know, I've also been to like wrestling shows, but just like at the gym. You know, uh, I went, they used to have a back in Granger in Indiana, they used to have Granger Fest and they'd have wrestling, but you know, it's just these amateur guys wrestling, getting thrown through tables and, you know, trying to make their way up that thing. And the wrestler, it reminds me a lot of that. Like this guy clearly at one point had his glory days, but now he's just doing like house shows at gyms or, you know, local, uh, warehouses or whatever. And he's just Mm -hmm. trying to like scrape it by, but the whole movie is wrapped up in his identity as this kind of 
fictional wrestler character and then his life's kind of sad yeah no his life you is know? terrible <laughs> yeah and like he finds some solace in his life and if the ending's left ambiguous which i won't ruin that but uh i, I really enjoyed that movie it's like just a good watch yeah no it's so, a it's a great movie and then number one uh for me i'm gonna go with uh rocky two <laughs> so right. rocky one and rocky two are both great they remind me a little bit of like godfather one and godfather two not that i'd compare those to godfather no but it, like the journey's not over at the end of one you kind of need two to like complete one it's a rematch he gets to the you know pinnacle of the sport and it's just amazing plus isn't that the one that has the running scene with all the kids mm, yeah yeah it's so lame it's awesome. like the, what are you talking no, about I know. it's awesome i love it no it's like because in the first one like it's him you know it's a montage of him like working out and running the steps and you know his arms up and all that but in the second one like he starts running and then everybody runs with him yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is amazing they just took it up a notch because he's like a celebrity dude yeah so but rocky one too just both incredible great I mean, honestly, in if you're talking solo sports movies, you could probably just between the Rocky and the Creed movies, you could probably just fill out a list with just those alone. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen Creed two. I know they're doing a third one, I think, but uh, I did see the first one, also really good. Really, I mean, they're all. Yeah, the Creeds are great. Some of the Rockies are great. Some are pretty bad. <laughs> um, I found this really hard because I don't know why. But it's as soon as I started looking at solo sports movies, they all seem to revolve around fighting martial arts. It's or really golf. Or the golf movies. I mean, I know there's like Days of Thunder and Rush that have to do with like the racing world. Um, but I just thought it was really weird because there's actually not that many sports movies. You know, there's like I Tanya about and cars, you know, Lightning McQueen. Okay, I don't think I would count that in a sports <laughs> movies conversation, but sure, sure, D man. Um, it's just kind of weird. There's not a lot of movies about like you know someone doing the decathlon or something like. Which it's I find a Michael movie. Phelps movie. They probably already are. That's I could see that being really good. <laughs> um, so I kind of ended up sort of ran landing in the same space as you for this, which was. You know, mostly these fighting type movies. And so honorable mention I'm going to throw out is Bloodsport from 1988. Mostly because Jean-Claude. Jean I love Jean-Claude Van Damme. And yeah. uh, that's probably the only movie of his that actually in any way could make any list ever. So we'll just put that as an honorable mention. But um, okay. because of that, all of my solo films now are solely boxing movies. So there's The Fighter from 2010 with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, the oh, David great Russell movie. film, which is is really good, based on a true story of Mickey Ward. There's um, and isn't what, that that is kind of about like addiction, like yeah, yeah. like because there's all this trouble. stuff with him and his brother and and you know where they come from. Um, 2005. I know you love this movie because we have talked about this. Cinderella Man. Oh, that's a great one. It was Honestly, way better than I thought it had any business being. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I would. I think you you can make the case that it's in the conversation as one of Ron Howard's best movies because it's it's incredible. Russell Crowe. Um, it's just a a heartfelt movie, and it's super emotional during a time when the world another guy kind of down on his luck. Right? You know, he's going through the depression. Like, gets a second chance and. And goes the distance. Yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, and then number one, got to go, uh, Rocky, 70, you know, 76. Like, Academy Award winner. Uh, I know people are going to have issue with it, but I still think the movie is incredible. And What did it beat for the Academy Award? Um, Was Jaws nominated? I don't even, I don't know. We should look. I don't remember. Rocky has right to here. be one of those, like, you know, I don't, it's like looking at the actual stuff that was made that year you're like was rocky the best picture arguably it was it made such a lasting impact i mean they got a franchise out of it uh obviously there's a statue dedicated to rocky in philly 
uh, you know, Philly kind of took on that scrappy identity of the character, mm-hmm. or maybe maybe he embodied that more than they took that on. But <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was like one of those things where, like, you know, yo, Adrian, like, there were so many things from Rocky that were iconic that even though I feel like that's probably one of the more criticized Best Picture winners, I mean, it definitely made a lasting impact. That's for sure. Oh no, for sure. It's, I mean, the it's character a, of Apollo Creed, come on, Mr. T, yeah. <laughs> even that crazy Russian, Ivan like, Drago. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. No, it's great. And I mean, the character is this fictional character has become, you know, a total part of our, you know, your favorite word, zeitgeist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk comedies just in the sense that i feel like a lot of the stuff we've been listing is really serious movies and for a reason there's a lot of sports movies that are based on real people or real life events and you know there's some drama there but it's also a genre where (laughs) you know some of the best comedies i can even think of are actual sports movies and i mean i was just thinking about the list like you know, I'm just going to list some that I don't think are on either of our lists for this, like basketball from 1998, little big league from 94, Mr. 3000, Bull Durham, Talladega Nights. Do you remember Cool Runnings? Yeah, Cool Runnings was awesome. Yeah. And those are just ones that I don't. You know, the, the Jamaican bobsled. 2000. Too. Like, and those are all just good comedies. Um. Can we talk about basketball for a second? I mean, it's not a real sport, but like that movie's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it is actually great. You kind of remind like that's a movie that has like slipped through the cracks for me. I mean, it's the creators of South Park. Uh, I'm trying to think of their names. Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Yeah, Trey, Trey and Matt. Yeah. And they star in it. They're the actual two main characters of the movie itself. So they're in there. But it's it's funny because that's a movie that like it's not on my regular rotation of movies to watch, but like, I feel like I definitely want to go back and watch it again. Cause it is hilarious. It's, it's just obscure. It's ridiculous. But... Like you'll see the movies that I list. These are the movies that I watch. Like, yeah, I'm always watching these movies. They're hilarious. I enjoy them. And yeah, they're fun. Well, you want to go? What do you, what's your list? All right. Well, I did have a honorable mention for balls of fury. <laughs> and then I don't know. Did you did this make your list? Because I, I wanted to see. Is that the the ping pong movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's just raunchy. Like this movie got made just you know for the hell of it. Like get some comedians in the room and make people laugh. But like it's not really the most serious of movies. But I another honorable mention. But I, I'm not sure. This might make your list. I'm not sure. Caddyshack. Uh, not on my list. Great movie, and I did debate putting it in there. I mean, yeah. Bill Murray being Bill Murray, it's hilarious. Well, you'll see. That got bumped from my list because there's another golf movie that I love more. <laughs> but number three on my list, I mentioned it earlier, is Space Jam. So I actually do watch the original Space Jam fairly regularly. It is pretty funny. And uh, uh, Bill Murray again as himself. <laughs> yeah, and surprisingly i don't know i think michael jordan like did a good job it's it's like good enough and the looney tunes are the looney tunes they're wacky but i don't know there's something about that movie that's endearing to me that like it always makes me laugh and i always have fun watching it and that's why i was so excited for the new one and to some degree i actually liked the new one i thought that was funny too but i know you hated it so Uh, absolutely and we should never talk about it again in real life or on this show this actually is one of the funniest sports movies Laugh out loud, hilarious, great movie, and that's Dodgeball. Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn. That is a great one. So, and this is, you know, it's literally, I think the subtitle of the filmy film is like an underdog story or something. Yep. So, yep. I mean, it is, you know, Joe's Gym. They're going up against uh, Globo Gym, I think is the name of it. Yep. And so, you know, it's the David vs. Goliath with Dodgeball. And they make it hilarious. I think, uh, what's his name? Is it Rip Torn? Is he the yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the coach. hilarious. Yeah, well, I Patches can't think of his name. Patches O'Houlihan. Patches O'Houlihan, yeah. 
hilarious what a what a performance that was you know he's like throwing wrenches at people but again like most sports movies if you want to be memorable you create memorable characters and they really did they had pete the pirate and they had you know the uh justin the cheerleader Mm -hmm. the male Mm -hmm. cheerleader who doesn't fit in and like all this stuff and they just yeah they they really did a good job i think honestly it's kind of weird but uh you know vince vaughn's character is probably like the straight man of this comedy like he doesn't really have any like wacky quirks but everybody else does and then freaking lance armstrong shows up like an asshole (laughs) yeah but the guy he's in that at the airport yeah. This is my second favorite sports movie of all time, and it is the funniest I think there is. And that's Happy Gilmore, <laughs> Adam Sandler, and I, that movie just absolutely cracks me up. The jokes in there are freaking hilarious. Like, I love when Chubbs, he's like, yeah, I almost won the tour one time, but then I couldn't finish. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, is it because you're black? And he's like, no goddamn alligator <laughs> bit my hand off he's got a wooden hand and he's like oh my god <laughs> you know like him sitting to his ex-girlfriend he's like i wanna kiss you all over and over <laughs> and again and then the asian woman like shows up and he's like yeah whatever <laughs> that that's like the epitome of like classic adam sandler right there uh, ben Stiller, again, in a very similar role. True. I also love true. when she's like, the grandma, he drops his grandma off at the nursing home and he's like, he's like, oh, grandma, uh, I'll take care of grandma. You you don't worry about it. And then he like leaves. He's like, thank you. Happy leaves. And then he turns around and the grandma's there and she's like, could I trouble you for a glass of warm milk? It always helps me go to bed. And he's like, you could trouble me for a glass of shut the hell up. <laughs> You're in my world now, grandma. Like, <laughs> Uh, that's an absolute one. classic so you know what's kind of crazy i mean i know what my list is and the audience doesn't but neither one of us mentioned a will ferrell movie i mean when you think he had a run where between like kicking and screaming talladega night semi-pro um blades of glory blades of Glo- glory where like every year he came out with a sports comedy movie yeah, I mean, which one's your favorite of Will Ferrell's? Probably Talladega Nights. I think that's probably the best. All the other ones are kind of like recycling that, like, the guy who's on top, like, yeah. falls off top and has to team up with, like, his rival to, you know. Maybe that's why it got a little formulaic at some point. I, You know, Kicking and Screaming I thought was all right. Blades of Glory I liked a lot. Figure skating. <laughs> So that was good. Yeah, um, I mean, it's worth mentioning, though, because he basically carved out a little niche for himself right there. Yeah, right. So I got to th- start out with an honorable mention for best comedies. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this. 1992, Mr. Baseball with Tom Selleck. No, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's hilarious. He is a over-the-hill major leaguer who goes to play baseball in Japan. Okay. <laughs> and he's just out of place because he's kind of an ass and he doesn't care. Yeah, fish and, out of water. Yeah. Um, I think it's really funny. And I mean, I love baseball, so not you know, it gets a, a boost for that. But uh number three for me is actually an Adam Sandler movie as well. There's also a remake, 2004, The Longest Yard. Oh yeah. Burt I Reynolds. think it's it's hilarious. I actually think it's superior to the original Burt Reynolds version from the 70s. And you know, it's Adam Sandler and his friends. They make some, you know, uh, yeah, interesting it, Happy characters. Madison crew. Yeah, yeah. And on top of it, they have a bunch of great NFL, play, you know, former NFL players who all make cameo appearances in the movie. And it's a lot of fun. Um, did you ever see this? 2015 Eddie the Eagle. No. I don't I even know what that is. should have listed it as a solo film. It is about a British ski jumper. <laughs> and okay. he, he is coached by Hugh Jackman and it's funny it's feel good it's just a great movie and again yeah. not something I typically think of when I think of sports movies till I start digging down into it um, and then number one for me again I put this on the top of best sports movies of all time 
1989 major league. I think it's Classic. hilarious. And yeah. It still holds up amazingly well. Classic for sure. So, all right. Well, we did comedies now. I'm interested to hear your take on the dramas because, you know, going through all the sports movies, there's a lot. Yeah, it's there's actually a super lot. And when you start thinking about like, I mean, Jesus, like and I, I tried not to in my list recount anything that I had been brought up. So I was trying to scratch my head because half of what I already listed is a drama. Um, but you think about stuff like, you know, Coach Carter, or Friday Night Lights, We Are Marshall, um, yep. Any Given Sunday, All the Right Moves. Like, I'm like, these are all good sports movies. But what I ended up settling on, or The Express, the Ernie Davis story. Did you ever see that? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, there's probably going to be a little bit of overlap here because you love some of the same movies that I love. So, I'm going to start out, honorable mention, 61. The okay. movie about Roger Maris trying to, you know, break the home mm -hmm. record directed by a huge baseball fan, uh, Billy Crystal. And I think it's a good movie. But number three on my list, and the entire audience is going to roll their eyes when I bring this up, 1988 Hoosiers. Ooh. Sorry. Speaks to me deep down as a Hoosier. You know, <laughs> it's... That's just true. something something that that I, I relate to and it's a great movie about people winning you know the a small town school winning the uh, gene hackman indiana you know state basketball tournament yep um number two you're gonna roll your eyes again everyone 93 rudy oh i love rudy i know, I know you love second. rudy i mean and then number one for me um i wanted to get something a little different 2019 Ford versus Ferrari. Oh yeah, that was really good. I thought it was I actually really watched good. that with Steph, my wife, and we yeah, that was a really good move. So that's what I'm I'm looking at. All right. Wise. Well, I have to give two honorable mentions, CP, and oh. those go to Field of Dreams, which good one, awesome good one. movie, and then Forty Two. Good movie. <laughs> so I mean, I yeah, that's just a. Uh, those are both really great. Uh, number three on my list, I'm going to go with The Blind Side. Ooh, so, okay. Okay. I actually really enjoy this drama. It's very touching. I thought, obviously, Sandra Bullock gives a great performance. And it was interesting to me because the story itself, the movie, came out while that player was still active. Uh, Michael Orr was still in Yeah, the Michael Orr. Yeah. yeah. So he was still playing, I think, for the Ravens at that time. Mm -hmm. Which is quite remarkable because you don't usually you see those stories come out after somebody's career is over. And yeah. in this instance, it came out. So it kind of made it turned him into a star. Uh, everybody kind of knew who he was. And I don't know to what degree that's all, you know, uh, <laughs> accurate to real life. But I thought it was a great story. There is obviously it's not necessarily the most sports focused movie. It's a family focused movie. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And it's a, you know, fantastic story of you know kind of beating the odds okay no that's good so number two i'm actually going to put moneyball and the reason for that is i was fascinated by moneyball after the movie so i, I mean obviously we've heard about statistics in sports and that that varies across almost all sports at this point but at the time, you know, it was really fascinating because they were able to find value in players based on their their stats rather than their star power, right? So yeah. everybody else was looking at certain metrics like home runs and what type of draw they were. Did they sell jerseys, right? Because even I think they have like a meeting in the movie. It's, so this is the Oakland A's baseball. And yeah. they're essentially – they're talking with these old scouts and everybody about who they should get. And some of the guys are like, Hey, we should pick this guy up. Cause he's going to sell seats. Like, you know, and the manager is like, or not the manager, but the GM is like, no, I'm trying to win Brad Pitt, who I also yeah. thought him and Jonah Hill gave, gave great performances. And it was just fascinating. It was an interesting look at a different side of sports. Well, what I think is really amazing about Moneyball is, you know, most sports movies are about what's going on on the field. 
And that is like buried deep in the story. You know, even when the A's are playing games, we're watching Billy driving around in his car, listening, right? We're watching yeah, on him. the radio. Yeah, we, we don't. The movie does not focus on the players on the field, which I thought was a really an interesting way of kind of turning what we expect from a sports movie upside down. Yeah, it's about I the really enjoyed office. it. Yeah. And I was engaged the whole time. You know, obviously, I'm not sure how they were able to actually get the rights to use MLB, Oakland, uh, some of those player names. I mean, it is somewhat of a, a, a historical kind of quote unquote, you know, non-fictional storytelling. But it was cool because we were like, oh, shoot, that's really interesting. And it's only maybe at that time when it came out a little over a decade after it happened. Yeah. So and yeah. you could see the influence that Moneyball had on baseball. It it has bit. Yeah, it's insane. Good, good movie. And number one on my list is Rudy. So I try to watch this at least once a year, usually when Notre Dame football comes back around. <laughs> it's it's literally like it's a great story about, you know, another, you know, sports trope about a guy kind of beating the odds and making the roster when ev- nobody really believes in him except his best friend. Yep. Which is I can't spoil it. It's just too good to spoil. So if you've never seen Rudy, I recommend checking it out. But essentially, it's his dream to play Notre Dame football. And he's trying to walk on and make the active roster. And it all culminates in this really powerful moment that, you know, actually happened. Again, it's fictionalized in the movie. So to the degree to which is it quite as legendary without the movie? Maybe not. But it really happened. Mm -hmm. And Rudy Rudiger. That's awesome. I love that movie. And I love his jacket, his Notre Dame jacket. Now, I would never get one. I have tons of Notre Dame apparel, but I feel like you got to go to Notre Dame, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Fair enough. It's like like a Letterman jacket, like for your high school. Like you can't, I mean, looks great. Awesome jacket, but you kind of got to go there. Yeah, fair enough. I agree. Damn it. I never went to Notre Dame. I never actually wanted to, but deep down part of me wanted to. Maybe I'll take a (laughs) class there one day and get a jacket. (laughs) <laughs> like is this your letterman jacket you're like no it was my like three unit jacket so yeah three jacket units i, did I didn't graduate course. just one i course. did graduate i graduated that course <laughs> um i completed the course <laughs> so last category i think we got to talk about and obviously if you're listening you'll notice that we have excluded all actual sports documentaries because that's a whole different monster um Especially with like ESPN plus these days, yeah, right. uh, 30 so for 30. There's yeah. so many there. And, and there's a lot of great ones. So what I want to ask you about is kids sports movie. And that's just because I do think that it is a specific subset of the sports genre. You know, okay. there's the movies that are funny. There's the movies that are serious. There's the movies that are made specifically for you and your kid to go to. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, there are a bunch of movies, especially, you know, this is literally the category that part of me, like, have you ever said out loud? You're like, they just don't make them like that anymore. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's like a genre, like there was a kid's sports genre that was probably maxed out in like the 90s Yep. that they don't really make them. You know, maybe now with streaming, uh, if, you know, kids, they find that there's a demographic for that, something like that might come back. But it felt like, you know, I guess Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, maybe in the early 2000s, started making their own original movies. And that like phased these out from from theatrical releases. But you really don't see a lot of kids sports movies. anymore. No, it's actually very weird. And I feel like everyone when I was thinking about this list that you could name, they're all from the 90s. Yeah, so number three, uh, which is actually a fairly good story. I mean, I know it got like 60 sequels, but (laughs) they're all more ridiculous than the next. But the original one was pretty good, and that was uh, Air Bud. Oh, dude, shout out out to Derek Becker who listens, and I know he said that's one of his favorite movies. Yeah, Air Bud was great. You know, he a dog that makes the basketball team, (laughs) but he was really talented. He, He was a great jump shooter, and you know, he got he was also good at steals. So but more than that, you know, <laughs> he is a dog. And so there's, you know, that whole family dynamic, of, you know, that whole thing. And I thought it worked. It worked fairly well for, you know, what I would consider to be a 90s kids movie. I mean, is it believable that that dog would make the team? 
yes but he'd have to be really good <laughs> so he looked good in the jersey too so all right and number two and number one go hand in hand for me cp these are my favorite uh, i told you one of them's my favorite sports movie so that's d2 the mighty ducks and number one the mighty ducks so <laughs> Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see D2, it is a direct sequel to the first one. But in, in one of the coolest twists on, you know, instead of just doing another season, that team gets recruited to play for Team USA in the uh, Junior Olympics. And they have to face off against, you know, the super imposing and also looks exactly like the Hawks, Iceland. And which <laughs> it's so funny because, like, I mean, if you think anything about Iceland, I, I don't think <laughs> like Mighty Ducks, they look so imposing and mean. They kind of come off as like Russians from like Miracle. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. I think as Icelandic people are like super nice. Well, also you my know? problem is, I mean, in the Olympics, I mean, what team are you going to lose? It would probably be the Canadians, not the Icelandic. Yeah, right. So that was always my issue. I'm like, they really should be mean Canadians, not, you know. I was always just shocked in D2. They they make their jerseys. They look exactly like the Hawks. Like yeah. black, white, and blue. <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, oh, you could have picked any colors. But they're like, no, that, that color scheme works. <laughs> so in D2, CP, I got to ask you, do you like the original green jerseys or the updated versions with the uh, like kind of duck mask? The ones that basically... Uh, the actual Anaheim Ducks adapted as their logo. I like I like the new ones better because I love that that duck scheme when the when the ducks were the mighty ducks once upon a time. I, I like yeah. the green ones, man. I don't know. There's something about that that just hits home. <laughs> that color scheme, but I mean, I do get it. Like it's kind of like a well, <laughs> it's a lame duck, uh, <laughs> you know, on that jersey. But yeah, the new ones, that logo is actually really sick. And that ended up being the logo adapted for almost all Mighty Ducks material yeah. afterwards. Yeah, I always like that. Um, it is so weird, though, dude. You're right. All these kids' movies, they were totally not. I think the last kind of kids' sports movies I can think of, and it's from the early 2000s, was Bend It Like Beckham. Yeah, okay. If you ever saw it. But that was kind of like the last one in that sort of kid, like, coming of age through sports which all these were like i mean in every year there was one like remember they had like the big green and and a bunch of yeah. those um i don't want to repeat the list that you have because most of those would be on mine so i'm going to start with number three the little giants that's remember a great that one movie. icebox yeah. yep yep um <laughs> from 94 and then i'm gonna go Neal. with yes yeah yeah um 93 the rookie of the year oh that's a great one and i mean it's about the cubs so that makes it even better in my mind well i just like that it was all a dream <laughs> you know <laughs> the cubs sucked and it, once it was over yeah they uh, still sucked wow thanks thanks <laughs> sometimes i wonder how we're friends no it's great dude uh you know it's a movie about a 14 year old who goes to play for the cubs because well, the Cubs do suck, and they have to actually start recruiting 14-year-olds to try and win the World Series. So, great movie. Um, and then number one, you've mentioned it about five times, but I haven't mentioned it, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So, I got to go with uh, 1996 Space Jam. Ooh, Space Jam is good. You know, we didn't mention uh, another 90s kind of sports classic was uh, Angels in the Outfield. Now, that follows yeah. the kids as fans. They're not mm -hmm. actually playing. That's why it didn't make my list. Uh, it is made for kids, though. No, and, no, no, no. Good point. But they're fans. They're not actually playing. So that one I kind of left off. What about, did you ever see Little Big League? I don't it's know about a kid who's, his grandpa owns the twins, and he dies. So he inherits the twins and starts what? managing them. Because he knows so much about baseball. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 90s kids movies were awesome. You remember, like, Blank Check? Like, yeah, there was some oh, so fun ones. Fun. What was that one with Macaulay Culkin where he like turns into a cartoon? I don't remember. It's like a wizard thing or something. Oh, Page Master. Yes. That movie was weird. Remember but that? They don't make movies like that anymore. 
I mean, maybe because it failed, but I don't know, dude, but there's so many nineties kids movies that I'm like, this genre just worked. I don't know. Something clicked and it was great with the sports. I mean, because we've named a bunch of those movies multiple times. I mean, hands down though, Mighty Ducks and Sandlot are that those are the best. Like they're good. I don't know if they would make my absolute total list of the best sports movies of all time. Sandlot is actually made really well. Like I, I mean, I'm not movie. saying that it, it, it isn't. I'm just saying that if I had to pick the top three of the movies that we've talked to, it would probably be Moneyball, Miracle, and Remember the Titans. And I think that I would stand by that as the best sports movies. Oh, so if I have to go best, but not my favorites, I think I would do The Wrestler. Happy Gilmore and Remember the Titans. I mean, I love Remember the Titans. It's just such a good movie. No, it's a great movie. But I would put Happy Gilmore on that list because I think it is the best sports comedy of all time. So, yeah. And it's also my favorite. So I, I would put <laughs> that right there. Shooter McGavin. <laughs> they even got Bob Barker to play himself. Classic. <laughs> The price is price wrong. Is wrong, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, hey, you've listened to us ramble back and forth about sports movies. So, audience, hit us up. What do you think are your favorite sports movies? Of, you know, if you want to share one particular list as we were kind of talking about these, or if you've got a list of what you think are the best, let us know. But I'm curious, and I know D-Man's curious. So, well, and like I said, there is actually an opportunity here for most of these sports for a list of you know within each sport we didn't want to go uh that route although you know hypothetically if you guys have like your favorite football movies or soccer movies or uh baseball whatever it is uh share that as well because we're just talking sports in general here but we hope you guys enjoyed the discussion today and uh keep the conversations going drucker we love all your comments but really everybody has been uh commenting very frequently you know, the last few months, which is just so much fun. It's fun for us because, you know, we're getting actual notifications that uh, you guys either loved our lists or hated them, which if you hate them and you think we're idiots, you can say that. Now, we might call you out on air because it's our show, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, feel free. So definitely keep the conversations going. You can follow the show at filmmakerscompass.com where we list all the directories, podcast directories we're listed in, as well as have links to all the episodes and all of our social media. So you can follow me directly at Big Kid D-Man. And you can follow me at NDCal5. Thanks for, you know, first of all, enjoy the Super Bowl, you know, have a good time, stay yeah. safe. And in the meantime, keep watching movies, but we'll see you back here next week. <laughs>